Jai Hind all of you. Myself Deepti Arora from MCA department. In the previous lecture, we have studied about the hash diagrams, its maximal and minimal elements, maximum and minimum elements. In today's video lecture, we will talk about upper bound, lower bound, meet and join. What are these relations and how we can identify these relations in a hazard diagram and what are the use of these in hash diagram or lattice. In further study, we will discuss about that. So, for starting, we will study about upper bound and lower bounds. So, what is upper bound? Let D be an element belong to a poset L. L is a hash diagram or lattice or poset, anything you can say right now. So, D is any element that is related to poset L, then D is said to be upper bound of A and B. Again, A and B are two elements that are in a poset L. And we have to check that what are the condition if A is less than equal to D and B is less than equal to D. Suppose D is an element and we will say D is an upper bound of two elements in a set such as A and B and the condition is that A and B should be in lower uh, bound or we can say should be less than equal to from the D. How it could be possible? We will check here. Suppose this is a hash diagram and we have to check the upper bound for a subset E and C. Subset B in which there are two elements E and C. So, here we can see the two elements E and C are here E and C. So, these are the two elements E and C. Now, we have to check the upper bound of these two elements E and C. So, for checking the upper bound, we have to see these elements should be in lower place from other elements that are in upper place because our health diagram is from uh, downward to upward position. We always make hash diagram in upward direction. So, what are the elements that are related to both E and C and are in upward direction? So, if we check, we will found that E is relate, directly related to G. So, G is in upper bound. E and C are directly in related, directly or indirectly related to H and F. So, there we found here three elements that are in upper place, not in upper bound, they are in upper place from E and C. Now, we have to check whether they belong to upper bound or not. To check whether they are in upper bound or not, we have to see the direct relation from E and C. If they are directly related to E and C, then we can say that is in upper bound. So, if we check E and G, yes, E and G are related to each other. If we check about C, Yes, C is also related to G. So, we can say the upper bound we found G. Now, next E and E and C. C is related to F, but E is not related to F because if we want to approach to F, we have to choose a path from E to G and G to F. But we can say G is not related to F because hash diagram, the relation is from downward to upward, not from upward to downward. So, G is not related to F. So, E is not related to F. So, F is not in upper bound to E and C. We have to check for both the elements. Now, H. C is related to H. Again, H is not related to E because for that also we have to shift one time downward. So, H is also not related to E and C. Now, check. We know that in hash diagram, each element is related to itself because the reflexive property also exists here. So, E is related to itself, C is also related to itself. So, we can say, can E and C, if, uh, for both E and C, E is also upper bound of E and C, yes. So, in upper bound, we got two elements G and E. Now, we have to check about the lower bound. What is lower bound? Suppose again, 
there are two elements a and b that are related to a poset l now what is the condition we have to check again there is an another element c that is related to a poset is the lower bound c we can say c is the lower bound of a and b if c is at lower position or is less than equal to both a and b c is in uh, related but it is less than equal to both a and b so we have to check for it also again now we have to find the lower bound again we are having the same set b in which there are two elements e and c now we have to check about the lower bound so for e and for c again we have to check now for e and c we have to check for the lower bound so what are the elements that are related to e and c but are in less than position from e and c so we can found here b b and a these are the three elements that are below e and c in the hash diagram and are related to each other now we can have to see whether they relate to each other or not a is related to c yes a is related to e yes so we can say a is in lower bound of e and c now it's for b b is related to c yes b is related to e yes we can find a relation here upward relation yes so b is in lower bound of e and c now check for d d is related to c no d is not related to c because again we have to move downward which is wrong so d is not related to c as well as d is not related to e also so d is not related to e and c now we have to check for e and c also because reflexive again reflexive relation exists here so can we say e and c are related to each other yes so c is in upper bound, lower bound of e and c yes so we can say c is also the lower bound of subset e and c so what we got in lower bound a b and c and upper bound bound we got g and e again we are now checking for another subset b c f and d okay now we will again check for another subset okay now we are having three elements c f and d c f and d for upper bound first in upper bound for c f and d we are finding here there are three elements g h and e now we have to find which element belong to e f c f and d so we will find here c is related to h yes f is related to h yes d is also related to h yes so we can say here yes h is in upper bound of c f and d now we will talk about g f is related to g yes c is related to g yes d is related to g yes so again g is also now we will check for e f is related to e no we will here we have to move to downwards which is wrong again so if for any element if we are finding that is not related to any other element we will say that this is not in the upper bound or lower bound of that particular element so from our chain we have found that e is not related to this so e is not the upper bound of these elements this subset now again check for reflexivity so f we can say for c and d f is in upper bound yes c is related to f d is related to f and f is itself related to itself so f is also in upper bound of c f and d now again for lower bound now we have to check the lower bound of c f and d what are in lower bounds a and b now we have to check a is related to c yes a is related to f yes a is related to d no because we have again to move downward 
so d is not related to a so we can say a is not in the lower bound of c f and d now again we have to check for b and we will find the same thing b is related to c b is related to f but b is not related to d so b is also in not in lower bound now we have to check for c and d because they are these are in the lower position and we have to check for reflectivity now c is related to f c is related to d again c is not related to d d is related to a d is related to c now we find c is not related to it. so what we find here we find there are no such elements that are in lower position and related to all of the elements in the subset b so in this case we are having phi that is no element this is the empty set we find no element that are related to each other in these subset c f and d so its lower bound is empty now let us see another diagram and we will compute the again upper bound and lower bound of these subset so again we are having a number 5 and 10 now we have to find the upper bound of 5 and 10 what we find here 25 50 100 20 now we have to check for the relation 5 is related to 20 yes 10 is related to 20 yes so 20 is in upper bound 5 is related to 25 10 is related to 25 no again we have to move downward so 25 is out from here now 5 is related to 10 then again it is related to 50 yes 10 is related to 50 so 50 is in upper bound now again 5 is related to 100 yes 10 is related to 100 yes so 100 is in upper bound now again we have to check for reflexivity 5 is related to 10 yes 10 is related to itself 10 is in upper bound so 10 is also in upper bound of this subset now again we have to check for lower bound again in lower bound we have to check for 5 and 10 in lower bound we are having 1 2 4 and again 5 and 10 we have to check for reflexivity purpose so one is related to 5 one is related to 10 yes one is in lower bound two is related to 10 but two is not related to 5 so two is in not the upper bound sorry lower bound of 5 and 10 again four four is also not related to 10 or 5 because we have to move downward so four is also out from the list now again we have to check for reflexivity 5 is related to 10 yes 5 is related to itself yes then 5 is in the lower bound of 5 and 10 now again we are having another subset okay now for 5 10 2 and 4 what are the elements 5 10 2 2 and 4 we have to find the upper bound for upper bound again we are having 25 50 100 20 now we have to check the direct relation 5 is related to 20 yes 10 is related to 20 yes 2 is related to 20 yes 4 is related to 20 yes so 20 will be definitely in upper bound of this subset again 5 is related to 25 again 10 is not related to 25 so it is out of the range now 5 is related to 50 10 is related to 50 2 is related to 50 but 4 is not related to 50 so 50 is not in the race now again 100 5 is related to 100 10 is related to 100 2 is related to 100 and definitely 4 is also related to 100 so 100 will be definitely in the upper bound of this subset now again check for reflexivity 5 is related to 10 2 is related to 10 4 is not related so 10 is also not the upper bound of this subset so these are the sub, uh, upper bound 20 and 100 we found only here two elements 20 and 100 which are in upper bound of 5 2 4 and 10 again we have to compute the lower bound 
again in lower bound we have to check for these particular elements 5 2 10 and 4 so we have we are finding that only the one element is here which is in lower position in this health diagram that is 1 so 1 is related to 5 years 1 is related to 10 years 1 is related to 2 and 1 is related to 4 so definitely 1 will be in the lower bound now no other element that are related to them so we have to check for the reflexivity so 5 is related to itself yes 5 is in lower bound of 10 years 5 is not related to 2 5 is again not related to 4 so 5 is out of the range again 10 no 2 again it is not possible because it is not related to 5 again 2 is related to 4 but not in use because it is not related to 5 again 4 4 is not related to 10 so only we got the single lower bound here that is 1 now for the third one we have to check for this one now we are having two elements here d and g that is this. Now we have to check the upper bound or lower bound of this. Okay. Upper bound of D and G again. In upper bound of D and G, we are finding G itself. Yes, D is related to G and G is itself related to itself. So we are finding only one element here that is G. And now for E and F, we have to check this is E and F, we are checking for E and F also simultaneously. So, for E and F, we are finding D, E and G. E is related to G, yes. E is related to F, yes. So, E and, uh, sorry, it is C, not E. So, for C and F, we have to check. Yes, C is related to G, yes. C is related to uh, sorry, F is related to G, yes. So, G is in upper bound definitely. Now, for E and D also we have to check. C is related to E, no. So, it is not in upper bound. C is related to D, no, it is not related. So, we got only one upper bound here also, that is G. Now, we are checking for the lower bounds for both the subset. So, in lower bound for E and, sorry, so, for C and F, we have to again check for the lower bounds. So, we are finding A and B are could be in lower bound of C and F. So, we have to check the direct relation. A is related to C, yes. A is related to F, yes. So, in lower bound, A is here. Now, B. For B, we have to check the relation in upward position but not in the downward position. So, we can find here, we can see here that if there is no upward relation with C of and B. So, we are say, we will say that only A is the element here. Now, we will check for C and F. Yes, C is in lower bound. C is related to F. C is related to itself. So, C is also in lower bound of F and C. Now, for D and G again, we have to check for D and G, we have to check the lower bound. Again, we are having two elements. What could be in lower bound? These could be in lower bound. So, we have to check B is related to D, yes. B is related to G, yes. B is in lower bound. E is related to D, E is related to G, yes. E is in lower bound. A is related to D, A is related to G, yes. C is related to G, but C is not related to D. So, C is not in lower bound. F is related to G, but F is not related to D. So, F is not in lower bound. Now again, D itself, yes, D is related to G and D is related to itself. So, D is also in lower bound. So, these are the upper bound and lower bound of these particular subsets we have computed. So, now you have got the idea what is the upper bound and lower bound of particular subsets in hash diagram. So, we move forward to the next topic that is the greatest lower bound on least upper bound. Or we can say greatest lower bound, short form we can say GLB, then infimum, we can say it infimum meet and the and operation. For this, we it has most of the common names, but uh, for we will particularly use the meet here or greatest lower bound here. We have studied about the lower bound, but we will find here the greatest lower bound. So, what is greatest lower bound? Let L be a poset. 
LBNE poset with the partial ordering relation is less than equal to. Now we have to compute the greatest lower bound. So what is the condition here? We have to check A and B are two elements that are in um, poset or uh, uh, hash diagram of L and G is another element that is related to L. So we can say G is the upper bound of A and B if what is the condition? G is in lower bound than A, G is in lower bound than B and again there is a G dash that is another lower bounds can be many. So we can say a lower in lower bound another G dash exists but that G dash is also less than equal to A, B and G also. Then we can say that G is the upper bound of A and B, sorry lower bound of A and B. Again least upper bound that is the mirror image of greatest lower bound. Again it has multiple names, we can say least upper bound or in short LUB, supremum, join or the OR operation. So let us compute it first. So this is a poset L or we can say a hash diagram. And it is having particular subsets, we have set sub particular subsets and we have to compute the upper bound, lower bound, then least upper bound and greatest lower bound of these. So continue with the first one, C and D. So here it is C and here it is D. Again, we have to compute the upper bound. So. For C and D in upper bound, it is we are seeing that it is having E and F. So for E and F, we have to check the relation. C is related to E, yes. D is related to E, yes. So E is an upper bound of B subset. Then C is related to F, no. Because we have to move downward, which is not possible. So F is in not the upper bound of this. Now again we have to check for the reflexivity. Again C and D. C is related to D? No. We have to move downward. D is related to C? No. So we have found a single element here E in upper bound. If we are finding the single element E in upper bound, so what would be the least upper bound? If we are having single element here, so the single element here would be the in least upper bound that is E. Again for the next one, compute upper bound, upper bound of A and B now. For A and B, we are having in upper bound all the four elements C, E, D and F as well. So we have to check for it. A is related to D, yes. B is related to D, yes. So D is here. A is related to C, yes. B is related to C, no. We have to move downward. So C is not related to A and B. Now E. A is related to E, yes. B is related to E, yes. So E is in upper bound. A is related to F, yes. B is related to F, yes. Now again check for reflexivity. A is related to itself, yes. A is related to B, no. Similarly, B is related to itself, yes, but B is not related to A. So A and B are all not also the upper bound of itself. So we found here three elements, D, E and F. Now we have to check the least upper bound. Least means at the lower position. We are having three positions here, E, F and D and we have to find the least one. So what we the least upper bound here from E, F and D, we can see here clearly that D is in the lowest upper bound or we can say that at the first point where they both are meeting A and B, that is D. So D is the least upper bound of A and B. Now again, we have to check for E and F. So for E and F, we have to check the upper bound. You can clearly see that in upper position, there are no elements that are in upper position than E and F. So here no element exists. So in upper bound E and F 
this is the empty phi. So, if no upper bound exists, similarly, no least upper bound exists here. Now, lower bounds. For lower bounds, we have to check whether for C and D. We have to compute for C and D. So, for C and D, we have to check the lower bound. So, for C and D, we are seeing here A, B and we will check for reflexivity C and D also. So, A is related to C, A is related to D, yes. So, A is in lower bound. B is related to D, yes, but B is not related to C. So, B is not in lower bound. Again, C and D. C is related to itself, but C is not related to D. D is related to itself, but D is not related to C. So, they both are out of the range. So, we find here only the single element that is in lower bound. So, in greatest lower bound also, we will find only the one element that is A. Now, again, we have to check for A and B. A and B. So, what would the least bound? For A and B, we are not finding any element that are below A and B. So, it is phi and the greatest lower bound will also be fine because since lower bound does not exist, so greatest lower bound will also not exist. Again, we will check for E and F. For E and F, how many elements are below E and F? All the elements are below E and F, A, B, C and D. Now, which of these elements are related to both the elements? C is related to E, C is not related to F. So, C is not related to both. So, C is not in the lower bound of this set. D is related to E, D is related to F. Yes, D is in lower bound. A is related to E, A is related to F. So, A is in lower bound. B is related to E, B is related to F. So, B is in lower bound. Now, we have to compute the greatest lower bound. We are finding here three lower bounds here. A, B and D. What is in the greatest position? Which one is in the greatest position? Clearly, we can depict here that D is in above position from all the three elements. So, D is the greatest lower bound of E and F. Now, again, see another hash diagram that is A, C, sorry, A, E and F. So, we are having three elements here, A, E and F and we have to compute the upper bound, least upper bound, lower bound and greatest lower bound. Another example is here. So, for A, E and F, we have to check the upper bound. So, in upper bound, we have finding that B, D, C, F and E. So, we have to check for the upper bound. A is related to B. A is related to F is not related to B. F is not related to D. So, B is not the upper bound. A is related to C, but F is not related. Again, F is not. D is related to E. D, e. D is not related to A. And F is not related. Uh, sorry. A is related to F. F is related to E. So, again, it is not up, upper bound. Now, we have to check for F and E also. A is related to E, yes. A is related to F, yes. F is related to E, yes. So, we can say E is the single element that is related to all the elements. So, E is in the upper bound. Again, least upper bound. Again, we will find here the single element. So, single element would be here. Now, for computing D and C. We have to check for D and C. For D and C, we will find again here two upper elements, F and E. So, D is related to E, but D is not related to F. C is related to F, but C is not related to D. Sorry, C is related to D, C is related to... Uh, sorry, D is related to E. Okay, we are checking for D and C. Okay. D is related to E, yes. C is related to E, yes, so E is in upper bound. D is not related to F, but C is related to F, so no uh, uh, use. So, now we will compute for C and D. We have to check the reflexivity. 
D is related to itself, yes. C is related to D, yes. So, D is in upper bound. Now, the least upper bound. Again, in the race of E and D, we have to check the least upper bound. So, we will find here in the least position, there is a D. So, least upper bound is D. Now, we have to check the lower bound. For lower bound, A, E and F, we have to compute. So, what are in lower bound? B, D and C. So, we have to check. A is related to B, yes, but F is not related to B, so B is not in lower bound. A is related to D, again F is not related to D, so D is in not in lower bound. A is related to C, C is related to F, C is related to E. So, but not, it is in lower bound, it is not in lower position that A, so it is not in lower bound. So, C is also in lower bound. Now, we have a particular element A here. A is related to itself, yes. A is related to F, yes. A is related to E, yes. So, only the single element we find here that is in lower bound is A. So, what is the greatest lower bound? Again, it will be A. Now, for C and D, we have to compute. C and D. What is the lower element? A and B. We have to check for this. B is related to D, yes, but D is not related to C, so it is not a lower bound. A is related to D, yes. A is related to C, yes. So, A is the lower bound. Again, check for reflexivity. C is related to D, yes. And D, C is related to itself, yes. Then C is in also in lower bound. So, what is the greatest lower bound? For greatest lower bound, A is also here, C is also here. So, we are checking, then come, we can compare here. C is the greatest lower bound. So, this is the how we can compute greatest lower bounds or join or meet we can say for the particular set of elements in a hash diagram. This is for all for today. We will continue in next class and next video lecture we will study about the letters. Thank you.